Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's success story interview, where we are going to be speaking with Clive, who had a recent match in 2021. So thank you so much for being here with us. We really appreciate it. Can you tell us a little bit about your match and what specialty you got into and which program? Um, I applied for diagnostic radiology this season, and uh, fortunately, I ended up matching into my number one program, which was University of Texas Southwestern. Um, Diagnostic Radiology Clinician Scientist Track. Uh, and I'll also be doing my transition, uh, my preliminary year at Nassau Medical University in New York, uh, Long Island. Okay, so when you matched, you matched into a preliminary program as well as your advanced track then? Correct. And can you tell us a little bit more about the specific training track that you mentioned, the clinician scientist? Uh, for the clinician scientists, because normally for diagnostic radiology, after the preliminary year, uh, it's four years. But for mm -hmm. the clinician scientist track, I do one extra year uh, being involved in research. It's mainly uh, geared for those who are interested in, uh, you know, being involved with research afterwards. And it also helps like in getting fellowship positions afterwards. So after finishing my preliminary year, uh, uh, June 2021, I'm going to do a year of research. Then mm -hmm. afterwards, I'll just go for four years of diagnostic radiology at the same institution in Texas. Do you know what sort of research you're going to be working on? Or is that sort of up in the air, depending on, um, you know, what's available at the time or based on what you've already been working on? Um, that's a good question. Uh, as of now, I don't really know what uh, kind of research I'm going to be involved in. But I have an idea what my interests are. Uh, since I did my MPH, I specialized in epidemiology and biostatistics. Okay. So I'm looking forward to being involved, especially with data science and you know, population health at large uh, as it pertains to diagnostic radiology. Um, yeah, something like that. So over the next year, uh, I'm going to be uh, talking to, the program is going to be reaching out to me uh, with uh, various researchers and you know, uh, labs that um, uh, so that I can find which, which particular research area uh, that I'll eventually like work with. So I, I, hopefully by the end of the year, if you ask me this question, I'll be having an idea what, uh, what I'll be doing. Awesome. And can you give us a little bit more background on what got you to this point right now? I mean, you mentioned that you have an MPH, that you've been involved in research before. So can you let us know? Um, what sorts of activities you've been involved with to get you to this point today? So uh, I'm from Zimbabwe. Uh, uh -huh. so, um, so after high school, I went to medical school in Cuba. Okay. And, um, while least I was in Cuba, uh, just like any other medical student, I thought I was going to be to like uh, surgery and everything. But after first year, I quickly realized that I started spending a lot of time like in the radiology department. I got interested in communicating with other physicians. Uh, mm -hmm. from you know, when they are consulting, like on imaging and stuff. So from there, that's when I just grew an interest in radiology. So after graduating, I went back to Zimbabwe. I did my internship for about seven months. And for some reason, I had to leave, quickly leave, like, you know, abruptly. Then I came to the United States. Then I started my MPH. I graduated in 2015 uh, from medical mm -hmm. school. Then uh, 2017, I started my MPH, which was two years at Washington University in St. Louis. So that's when I was introduced to research at the highest level. Uh, most of it, it was, I was a master's research fellow in global health and nutrition. Wow. Um, the research was actually transdisciplinary. We were working with engineers, uh, physicians, public health professionals, social workers uh, on some of the pressing uh, global nutrition uh, projects. And some of them, they also had uh, radiology component. That's where I ended up uh, meeting some radiology faculty from Washington University in St. Louis School of Medicine. And we eventually, um, I ended up doing my practicum at Instu uh, Malintro Institute of Radiology at Washington University uh, School of Medicine. Uh, we got an abstract published and I ended up getting also a publication, like uh, a manuscript published at one of the top journals in radiology. So ultimately those faculty, there were two of those faculty, they ended up writing a letter of recommendation for me. Mm -hmm. After I then went to Icon School of Medicine, where I was in, involved in cardiology research. It also had some 
uh, imaging component, uh, it was mainly patients with hypofamilial hypercholesterolemia, and they're prone to have acute pancreatitis and following to see whether those who were receiving like new monoclonal antibodies for lowering uh, cholesterol um, were, were improving than those who were on placebo. Then last summer, I moved uh, to Hopkins where I'm involved in infectious diseases research as well, um, which does have like, you know, uh, the same components I was having from MPH, um, data analytics, uh, public health, infectious diseases as well, like um, uh, various clinical trials that are going on. So that has been my trajectory. Then I applied last year, October, and I uh, had uh, interviews and I'm happy I was able to match it my number one program. Congratulations again on that. Did you just apply to radiology or did you apply to multiple specialties? Um, I did apply to multiple specialties. I applied to neurology um, and I also applied to internal medicine. But uh, I had most of my interviews, the bulk were actually in radiology. Then I had uh, neurology as well. Then just one interview from internal medicine. Then uh, preliminary interviews as well. And when you were taking those interviews, did you feel like each specialty had a different um, approach or focus, or were they all similar? Did your radiology interviews seem to go the best for you? Well, how was your overall experience? Oh, if I have to be honest, yeah, my radiology interviews were the best. Um, I'm not yeah. sure why. Then even neurology, some of the programs were actually good. Um, I can't, they were different, like the interviews, but what ends up happening is the basic structure about me, myself, because the, the faculty or your, the interviewers, they mainly want to know you as a person, what are you bringing on the table? What sort of skills do you have? So it was basically the same structure. It might change like, you know, some of the things that I'll be talking about, but I think with enough practice, um, you know, and not sounding scripted or anything. I was ready for any question, be it internal medicine, I would know how to actually respond to the question in the context of what I'm talking about, if it's radiology and everything. Because I've had, as you, as you can see, I've had diverse uh, 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 set of skills that mm -hmm. are applicable to all the specialties. So like I said, when I was at Washington University in St. Louis doing re uh, research in radiology department, my mentor uh, was actually a neuroradiologist. So the research that I was involved with actually had to do with sickle cell disease, but we were looking at imaging, MRI imaging, and um, mm -hmm. those patients, especially um, minorities, uh, African-American um, uh, individuals who are prone to have sickle cell disease. So if you look at such a project, it's applicable both to neurology and radiology. So whichever way I talk about it, I might end up emphasizing one way or the other but it's applicable to both specialties as well. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you have such a diverse, uh, you know, array of experiences and interests and skills. How do you see that all playing out as you continue your training, um, you know, through radiology and with research? You know, where is this taking you in the long run? Um, as a researcher, I, I think now I still have an open mind um, as to what I'm looking forward to, to be doing like later on. So having a diverse set of skills, uh, they're really important, especially in research, um, depending on the questions that I'll be working with, labs and everything. You know, in research, there's a lot of collaboration going on. So having worked, for example, when I was an uh, MPH student, we were collaborating with various uh, people because some of, the, some of the problems that we face around the world, they're quite complex. They cannot mm -hmm. be solved by engineers or physicians alone. They have to, you know, they require collaboration. So that's how I look at myself coming as a physician, having had all that experience and um, having had all that experience, it means I'll be able to collaborate and you know, be able to uh, make some contribution to science like going forward. Do you have advice for especially IMGs who are trying to get involved with research or trying to get more experience in fields like radiology? Um, I think the biggest thing that I can always tell people, like uh, just looking at my journey, I was never, I was not worried about, you know, my year of graduation. I hear a lot of people talking about it. Oh, I graduated in 2015. But if I have to tell you, I had over 20 interviews and uh, none of my interviewers ever asked about, you know, my year of graduation. It didn't matter because they could see what I was doing. That's the yeah. first thing. 
prioritizing taking your board exams, yeah, those ones, they do matter because, you know, before you are even called for an interview, they're already looking at what sort of scores you have. I mean, yeah. it's not about getting like, you know, the best possible score, but at least, you know, being above average or around average, you should be able to have it. And also building a diverse set of skills. What it does is it doesn't ultimately just get you into residency. A lot of people do have clinical experience. Anyone uh, who has passed like board exams, they should be able to do something like radiology. So now for a program which is interviewing, um, I don't know, a hundred people for just four positions, how are you going to be able to make yourself stand out? I mm-hmm. think that's what helped me the most, you know, having my background, the trajectory I had had, which was quite unusual. And I had people talking about it. And, you know, even when we were sitting in interviews, I would just hear that, you know, you have these skills. They knew that I had a lot to offer on the table. So I'll be like, uh, if they want to be involved in research also, the other thing is you don't really need to be at a top institution or anything like that. There are a lot of publicly available data sets that people, uh, that anyone around the world can access every research question. Uh, um, Like now, uh, most of the conferences are being done virtually. So you can have an abstract and actually submit it to a conference wherever you are in Africa, Latin America, Europe, Asia, and just submit it and present it virtually. And you'll be able to add it to your CV, uh, to your resume or CV, which would uh, count a lot, like, you know, when it comes to residency interviews and everything, just showing an interest, uh, you know, being able to talk about what you were exactly you were looking at and what, you know, it helps, like in science, it doesn't have to be something published in nature, but just showing okay. that you have that broad set of skills, because I'm sure most of med- most medical schools, they do have, you know, a biostatistics course that they teach their students and everything and just building from there and accessing CDC has a lot of data and you know yeah. people can actually take advantage of and after even after finishing for, for most IMGs some of them they do match the same year they graduate but if you're someone like myself it does help a lot like when you're moving in between and you're starting to take exams and everything if you're going to look for a research position and you are showing that you know you are able to do an abstract or to write a manuscript with other people and collaborating, it will help as well to get a research position and, you know, continue building your profile because not everyone is able to just check the exams and, you know, uh, apply for match like in the same year. So that would be my advice to those people. That's really very in-depth, detailed um, advice to be able to take advantage of what opportunities are available, even if you're not there in person and, there are data sets available out there. So I think that's really helpful. Um, what made you want to get an MPH specifically? And are you happy that you got that degree? Um, I've always had an interest in uh, public health. So since, um, I'm not sure, since medical school. So when yeah. I came there with the, some of the things, I actually thought of getting a PhD. But the problem with the PhD is I wasn't sure about what specific topic area I would do because I had to, you know, I had to make that decision, like, you know, what sort of something, I I wasn't uh, decided on what I want to work on, uh, like, you know, for the rest of my life. So I ended up, you know, MPH is more of like it was broad based, so many courses that I was able to take, so many skills, and be able to also define a certain certain area that uh, I would end up pursuing, like in the end. So I'm really happy I was able to do it. For as someone who just came to the United States, I did not know any physician who could write a recommendation better for me. So it actually helped me reach out. Uh, Washington University is one of the top medical schools in the country. And yeah. I was the medical school. If I had tried to approach them, for example, to be involved in research, you have to be uh, included on the IRB and uh, everything. If you're coming from outside, you will not be able to be added there because there are HIPAA concerns and everything. But as an MPH mm-hmm. student, since I was already a part of the institution and I had already taken the, the courses, uh, on research, it was easy for those uh, for those uh, physicians to be able to add me and you know to be able to contribute, which ultimately helped me. I don't think without MPH, uh, I don't think I would, that would have been possible. Um, uh, and the other things is it helped with networking. And the other thing that ha- it helps with is you know I do ha- I still have access to them. Now, if I want to write a manuscript or uh, anything, I can just reach out to the librarian. I have access for the rest of my life. I just, you know, get get all manuscripts. And the biggest thing that actually happens is um, I also have access to career services. So in terms of editing my CV, my personal statement and everything, I have access to that also for the rest of my life. So there are so many things that are intangible that you end up getting in addition Mm -hmm. to 
world class education, but there are other uh, other services that were there that I don't think would have been possible to have like without doing an MPH. Are there other ways that people can get? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, paying um, a lot of money, like you know, to have services, uh, paying money to have you know uh, essay editing and all those things that they might need. But if you if you know just by being part of the university, even as an alumni, you still have a network that you know of people who actually help. If you had to apply again, or you were applying again, would you do anything differently? Um, I think it just depends on what I was going to be applying to. If I was applying to radiology, I don't think there's much that I would have changed. Because at the end of the day, I think, you know, getting in, getting, you know, a couple of interviews, it just means that, you know, as an individual, as the programs are actually uh, looking uh, at, are seriously considering you, just like any other candidate. But I think the question after getting an interview is how do you make yourself stand out like, you know, amongst the pool of applicants, probably just working out, you know, what I would just say is to continue to be unique and not follow the trajectory that others have followed. Because you can imagine if there are 100 people and you have done basically what everyone else has done, how then are they going to be able to remember you? Uh, if they say you interview in November and they're sitting down like, you know, for their rank or the least end of February. How do they remember you? Like, how do you stand out? But if you have, if you know, by continuing to be unique, and you know, taking like different projects from everyone else, and you know, making your making an impact, then um, that would um, that would help a lot. So I think personally, I don't think I was going to change anything. I was just going to continue at Hopkins if I had not matched. I continue yeah. working with the great team that I have, and you know, just apply next year. Probably have a little bit more publications, and you know. Um, just being ready for it. Perfect. Well, congratulations again on your match. I know we're all very happy for you. And I hope that your year of research is as rewarding and interesting as it can be. And we definitely hope to hear back from you um, with updates along your journey. So thank you again for taking the time to share your insights and your experiences. And we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, you reaching out and everything. And uh, anyone who is interested in knowing or whatever it is, they f should feel free. I'm happy to help. I was an IMG. And I think one of the things that has helped also is just to have people who are willing to share the information, talk to me and, you know, everything. So I'm happy to help whoever might, you know, need uh, help or orientation as to how the process goes and stuff. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I appreciate it.